Typical capital budgeting decisions include plant expansion, equipment selection or replacement, lease or buy, and cost reduction. Capital budgeting decisions tend to fall into two broad categories. 1. Screening decisions. Does a proposed project meet some preset standard of acceptance? 2. Preference decisions. Selecting from among several competing courses of action. These methods focus on analyzing the cash flows associated with capital investment projects, payback period, net present value, internal rate of return. The simple rate of return method focuses on incremental net operating income. Typical cash outflows in a capital budgeting decision include repairs and maintenance, incremental operating costs, the initial investment, and working capital. Typical cash inflows are salvage value, reduction of costs, incremental revenues, and release of working capital. Note that working capital is recognized as a cash outflow at the beginning of the project and a cash inflow at the end of the project. A dollar today is worth more than a dollar a year from now. Therefore, projects that promise earlier returns are preferable to those that promise later returns. The capital budgeting techniques that best recognize the time value of money are those that involve discounted cash flows. Learning Objective 1 is to determine the payback period for an investment. The payback method focuses on the payback period, which is the length of time that it takes for a project to recoup its initial cost out of the cash receipts that it generates. The payback method analyzes cash flows, however it does not consider the time value of money. When the annual net cash inflow is the same every year, the formula for computing the payback period is the investment required divided by the annual net cash inflow. Management of the Daily Grind wants to install an espresso bar in its restaurant that 1. costs $140,000 and has a 10-year life, 2. will generate annual net cash inflows of $35,000. Management requires a payback period of 5 years or less on all investments. What is the payback period for the espresso bar? Investment required of $140,000 divided by $35,000 annual net cash inflow equals four years. According to the company's criterion, management would invest in the espresso bar because its payback period is less than five years. Consider the two investments. Which project has the shortest payback period? Project X has a payback period of two years. Project Y has a payback period of slightly more than two years. Project X has a payback period of two years. Project Y has a payback period of slightly more than two years. Which project do you think is better? Shortcomings of the payback method include It ignores the time value of money. It ignores cash flows after the payback period. A shorter payback period does not always mean a more desirable investment. Strengths of the payback method include It serves as a screening tool. It identifies investments that recoup cash investments quickly. It identifies products that recoup initial investment quickly. When the cash flows associated with an investment project change from year to year, the payback formula introduced earlier cannot be used. Instead, the unrecovered investment must be tracked year by year. For example, if a project requires an initial investment of $4,000 and provides uneven net cash inflows in years 1 through 5 as shown, the investment would be fully recovered in year 4. Learning Objective 2 is to evaluate the acceptability of an investment project using the net present value method. The net present value method compares the present value of a project's cash inflows with the present value of its cash outflows. The difference between these two streams of cash flows is called the net present value. Two simplifying assumptions for the net present value method are 1. All cash flows other than the initial investment occur at the end of periods. 2. All cash flows generated by an investment project are immediately reinvested at a rate of return equal to the discount rate. Lester Company has been offered a five-year contract to provide component parts for a large manufacturer. Cost and revenue information is as provided on the slide. At the end of five years, the working capital will be released and may be used elsewhere by Lester. Lester Company's discount rate is 11%. Should the contract be accepted? 
The annual net cash inflow from operations of $80,000 is computed as shown. Since the investments in equipment and working capital occur immediately, the discounting factor used is 1.000. The present value factor for an annuity of $1 for 5 years at 11% is 3.696. Therefore, the present value of the annual net cash inflows of $80,000 per year is $295,680. Alternatively, the individual net cash inflows could be discounted using the related five separate present value of a single payment of $1 factors. This method would produce the same present value of $295,680. The present value factors in Appendix 12b are rounded to three decimal points. Another approach is to use Microsoft Excel's NPV function to perform these calculations using unrounded discount factors. The present value factor of $1 for 3 years at 11% is 0.731. Therefore, the present value of the $30,000 cost of relining the equipment in 3 years is $21,930. The present value factor of $1 for 5 years at 11% is 0.593. Therefore, the present value of the $5,000 salvage value of the equipment is $2,965. The total present value of the release of the working capital and the salvage value of the equipment is $62,265. The net present value of the investment opportunity is $76,015. Accept the contract because the project has a positive net present value is positive. Denny Associates has been offered a four-year contract to supply the computing requirements for a local bank with the cash flow information as given. The working capital would be released at the end of the contract. Denny Associates requires a 14% return. What is the net present value of the contract with the local bank? The net present value of $28,230. This is the complete analysis of this project. Let's look at another way to calculate the MPV. Lester Company has been offered a five-year contract to provide component parts for a large manufacturer with the given cost and revenue and information. At the end of five years, the working capital will be released and may be used elsewhere by Lester. Lester Company's discount rate is 11%. Should the contract be accepted? Since the investments in equipment of $160,000 and working capital of $100,000 occur immediately, the discounting factor used is 1.000. The total cash flows for years 1 through 5 are discounted to their present values using the discount factors from Exhibit 12B-1. For example, the total cash flows in year 1 of $80,000 are multiplied by the discount factor of 0.901 to derive this future cash flow's present value of $72,080. As another example, the total cash flows in year 3 of $50,000 are multiplied by the discount factor of 0.731 to derive this future cash flow's present value of $36,550. The net present value of the investment opportunity is $76,015. Notice this amount equals the net present value from the earlier approach. Once you have computed a net present value, you should interpret the results as follows. One, a positive net present value indicates that the project's return exceeds the discount rate. 2. A negative net present value indicates that the project's return is less than the discount rate. If the net present value is positive, then the project is acceptable because it promises a return greater than the required rate of return. If the net present value is zero, then the project is acceptable because it promises a return equal to the required rate of return. If the net present value is negative, then the project is not acceptable because it promises a return less than the required rate of return. The company's cost of capital is usually regarded as the minimum required rate of return. The cost of capital is the average return the company must pay to its long-term creditors and stockholders. The net present value method automatically provides for the return of the original investment. Carver Hospital is considering buying an attachment for its x-ray machine with the given cost, life, and cash inflows. No investments are to be made unless than have an annual return of at least 
Will Carver want to make the investment in the attachment? Notice that the net present value of the investment is zero. This implies that the cash inflows are sufficient to recover the $3,169 initial investment and to provide exactly a 10% return on the investment. Learning Objective 3 is to evaluate the acceptability of an investment project using the internal rate of return method. The internal rate of return is the rate promised by an investment project over its useful life. It is computed by finding the discount rate that will cause the net present value of a project to be zero. It works very well if a project's cash flows are identical every year. If the annual cash flows are not identical, a trial and error process must be used to find the internal rate of return. If the internal rate of return is equal to or greater than the minimum required rate of return, then the project is acceptable. If it is less than the minimum required rate of return, then the project is rejected. When using internal rate of return, the cost of capital acts as a hurdle rate that a project must clear for acceptance. Decker Company can purchase a new machine at a cost of $104,320 that will save $20,000 per year in cash operating costs. The machine has a 10-year life. What is the internal rate of return on the investment? Future cash flows are the same every year in this example, so we can calculate the present value factor for the internal rate of return as investment required divided by annual net cash inflows. $104,320 divided by $20,000 equals 5.216. Using the present value of an annuity of $1 table, find the 10-period row, move across until you find the factor 5.216. Look at the top of the column and you find a rate of 14%. If Decker's minimum required rate of return is equal to or greater than 14%, then the machine should be purchased. The expected annual net cash inflow from a project is $22,000 over the next five years. The required investment now in the project is $79,310. What is the internal rate of return on the project? $79,310 divided by $22,000 equals 3.605 which is the present value factor for an annuity over five years when the interest rate is 12%. The net present value method is often simpler to use. The internal rate of return method makes a questionable assumption that cash inflows are reinvested at the internal rate of return. If the internal rate of return is high, this assumption may be unrealistic. It is more realistic to assume that the cash flows can be reinvested at the discount rate which is the underlying assumption of the net present value method. We will now expand the net present value method to include two alternatives. First, we will analyze the alternatives using the total cost approach. All cash inflows and all cash outflows will be included in the solution under each alternative. No effort will be made to isolate those cash flows that are relevant to the decision and those that are irrelevant. And the net present value will be computed for each alternative. White Company has two alternatives, remodel an old car wash or remove the old car wash and install a new one. The company uses a discount rate of 10%. The annual net cash inflows are $60,000 for the new car wash and $45,000 for the old car wash. Data associated with the new car wash is presented on this slide. Let's look at the present value of this alternative. If White installs the new car wash, the investment will yield a positive net present value of $83,202. If White remodels the existing car wash, the remodeling costs would be $175,000 and the cost to replace the brushes at the end of six years would be $80,000. Let's look at the present value of this second alternative. If White remodels the existing car wash, the investment will yield a positive net present value of $56,405. Both projects yield a positive net present value. However, investing in the new car wash will produce a higher net present value than remodeling the old car wash. In decisions where revenues are not directly involved, managers should choose the alternative that has the least total cost from a present value perspective. Home Furniture Company is trying to decide whether to overhaul an old delivery truck now or purchase a new one. 
the company uses a discount rate of 10%. The information pertaining to the old and new trucks is as shown. The net present value of buying the new truck is $32,883. The net present value of keeping the old truck is $42,255. Notice that both NPV numbers are negative because there is no revenue involved. This is a least cost decision. Home furniture should purchase the new truck. The net present value in favor of purchasing the new truck is $9,372. Learning Objective 4 is to evaluate an investment project that has uncertain cash flows. Assume that all of the cash flows related to an investment in a supertanker have been estimated, except for its salvage value in 20 years. Using a discount rate of 12%, management has determined that the net present value of all the cash flows, except the salvage value, is a negative $1.04 million. How large would the salvage value need to be to make this investment attractive? The equation net present value to be offset of $1,040,000 divided by the present value factor of 0.104 can be used to determine that if the salvage value of the supertanker is at least $10 million, the net present value of the investment would be positive and therefore acceptable. Bay Architects is considering a drafting machine that would cost $100,000 last four years, provide annual cash savings of $10,000, and considerable intangible benefits each year. How large, in cash terms, would the intangible benefits have to be per year to justify investing in the machine if the discount rate is 14%? The net present value of the investment is $70,860. Dividing that by the present value factor of 2.914, indicates that annual intangible benefits must be at least $24,317 to justify the investment. Purchasing a drafting machine with a cost of $100,000 and which will provide annual cash savings of $10,000 over a four-year period at a discount rate of 14% will result in annual intangible benefits equal to $70,860. Learning Objective 5 is to rank investment projects in order of preference. Screening pertain to whether or not some proposed investment is acceptable. These decisions come first. Preference decisions attempt to rank acceptable alternatives from the most to least appealing. When using the internal rate of return method to rank competing investment projects, the preference rule is, the higher the internal rate of return, the more desirable the project. The net present value of one project cannot be directly compared to the net present value of another project unless the investments are equal. The Project Profitability Index equals the net present value of the project divided by the investment required. The profitability indexes for investments A and B are 0.10 and 0.20, respectively. The higher the profitability index, the more desirable the project. Learning Objective 6 is to compute the simple rate of return for an investment. The simple rate of return method does not focus on cash flows. Rather, it focuses on accounting net operating income. It is calculated as annual incremental net operating income divided by the initial investment, which should be reduced by any salvage value from the sale of the old equipment. Management of the Daily Grind wants to install an espresso bar in its restaurant that 1. Costs $140,000 and has a 10-year life. 2. Will generate incremental revenues of $100,000 and incremental expenses of $65,000, including depreciation. What is the simple rate of return on the investment project? The simple rate of return is equal to $35,000 divided by $140,000, or 25%. Shortcomings of the simple rate of return include It ignores the time value of money. The same project may appear desirable in some years and undesirable in other years. When investment center managers are evaluated using Return on Investment, ROI, a project's simple rate of return may motivate them to bypass investment opportunities that earn positive net present values. A post-audit is a follow-up after the project has been completed to see whether or not expected results were actually realized. End of Chapter 12